Hi, to continue with our study of natural language processing, um, we will go over the implementation in Prolog of an algorithm for uh, parsing, um, doing some probabilistic parsing in Prolog. Um, to accomplish our goal, we will use the companion resource book that comes with the textbook that uh, lists several AI algorithms implemented in Lisp, Prolog, or and or Java. For your convenience, I place a copy of that book in the content section for this class. And um, again, going back to that book on page 111, and that's the one that I'm listing right now, they have initially the description of a context-free grammar. So for that context-free grammar, um, is using the notation that we were using before, and, and, and actually similar to the example that we were also working before previously in, 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 in we were talking about context-free grammar. So this is a sentence, and that's a pretty uh, easy implementation. So I think we did something very similar before. So a sentence in this case, it says that is a, a compound by merging noun phrase and a verb phrase. So it has those two parts. And then that a noun phrase, it has two possible definitions, a noun, an article, followed by a noun. So there are two. So this is like an or. So I can have two possible options. We have some examples on generated sentences using a context-free grammar. So here there is a per phrase, and there are also two implementations. And then article, in this case, there are two terminals, two possible words. In this case, two possible strings, A and B, and this is for noun, and this is for verb. We did some study before about this, so I just want to show the notation that we have before and the notation that they had there. It may be, for some of you, maybe looks a little different, but this is uh, what they have on there. And then we also were talking before about non-terminals and terminals. So in this case, they're talking about six non-terminals. And uh, we got also six terminals, which are listed in these sets. Again, I'm making a reference to page 111, and that resource book is, is a PDF copy of that resource book is in uh, in uh, in your uh, uh, you can access that from from the content section. Okay, so now something else that I want to make an emphasis that I mean this this notation is is, is very standard, but sometimes we merge. The definition because it's uh, uh, also a tradition that you just define these ones. But like for example, in Prolog, remember when you define something multiple times, it's equivalent to doing all. That this is a possible definition or another definition. But I want you to remind you that this noun phrase can be merged into this. The definition of noun phrase is that it says it is a noun, and then this symbol that says or it is an article followed by a noun. And then a verb phrase can also be merged in article, noun, and verb similarly, right? So that looks like a more compact. Now, it is also easier, and I also did that before, to, if we're manipulating the grammar, like for example, we want to do uh, a different analysis, this is even better if we want to do some study. I, I mean, and th this is a very simple grammar, but maybe, um, if I know more about context-free grammar and I know about normalization, or I want to do more about merging this with all, with another grammar and making a more complex grammar, it's easier to make the study this way. In this in case, I make an association that this is my x, this is my x, this is my y, so this is x, this is y, and then the notation here for the study uppercase letters means variables, lowercase letters mean terminals, so in this case the A will be this A, the V will be associated with the, Z with men, D with dog, P with likes, F with bytes, right? So this is a different way. So maybe when we look into this, it doesn't uh, make sense, but this is just to remind you that when you want to make something more complex and then maybe study about the language, Maybe working with this is a little easier than working with something that is this big, which means the same thing, right? Because we want to kind of make sense of what this means. Okay, so now, let's see 
how is that initially, remember that our goal is to go in into the probabilistic version of the parser. So initially what they have is that it says a sentence can be substituted by two sections, right? And then they are looking for dividing and that's the part that how is that going to split the sentence because the sentence is going to be compound from several strings, in this case in English, the English words. But you need to fragment that in two sections. Then one of those sections wants to match the definition of a noun. And it matches the definition, it gets into one of these. It, one of these returns true. And by this, we'll be matching this definition. In the case of noun, has to match a single string, which is the string composed by characters M, A, N. Right? So let's go and see how they have that implementation. So this is, that will be the basic approach of parsing. Like you provide a sentence and then you say, is this sentence okay with the definition of this grammar? Uh, let me see, what is it that they have? So here this is, this is the way that they define their grammar. There you see the definition. If you look a little different, or maybe some of you are basically the same. I show you three different ways of defining the language. Uh, this is more going closer to the notation of prologue. In this case, they have this kind of facts. But now let's go into the actual implementation. So first, they have the implementation of sentence. So in this case, like I say, sentence, sentence is going to be uh, two fragments. And one of those fragments is the noun phrase, and the other should be the verb phrase. The problem is we don't know where to cut the line or where to draw the line that says, oh, this this belongs to the noun phrase, and this is to the verb phrase. So that's what we said that we will be parsing. So in this case, look, we provide two segments, and the way that we're going to do initially is the start is the whole sentence, and the end will be an empty set. And we're going to be evaluating elements from one set and uh, passing the ones. Once we find a match, then the others will go into the other segment and see the other segment matches that. And this is what this tries to do. So here I got the, this is the starting, and then I'm looking for a match. If I found it, whatever is not useful or didn't find, I want to place that in rest and then see if the rest from here to the end matches verb phrase. So let's go and see what happens. So here is just what they call the parse tree, in which they say, for the example of the case of the sentence that says, the, my, the man bites the dog, which is uh, uh, OK with the grammar. So it's a, a, a sentence that can be generated by this grammar. It says, OK, so we've got sentence. And then from sentence, which is the star symbol, we need to go all the way down to match the man bites like in the way that is here. So one possibility is the sentence is be substituted by noun phrase and verb phrase, and verb phrase by article and a noun, and article matches the noun matches man. Verb phrase will be divided in these two segments. And remember the alternatives in the definitions of a sentence, it was very straightforward because we got only one possible substitution. And we were also discussing that a more complex grammar will have multiple way of defining a sentence, right? But just for the simplicity of this example, there is one. In this case, noun phrase had two possible definitions, and those are the ones that we have here, right? So they were selecting this possible substitution. For verb phrase, we got also two possible substitutions. And uh, so this is just explaining how the substitution works until eventually each one of the strings is matched, and that's what they call that is the parse tree. We continue with the um, with the uh, code. Remember that we already went into the definition of a sentence. So now this is the way that they are working with the fragments. So here it is the case that we got an X, and then in this case. Uh, that's how they, they initialize. So we're providing actually when we call this program with the sentence here, the X, and then that sentence, this is the initial thing, is here, and then the first time that I call it here, I provide an empty set. And we went over this before, so we're looking for those fragments in which the start, see, I'm going to be looking in here for a fragment that matches noun phrase. 
an image's noun phrase if one of these two possible statements is true, which in this case it is the uh, the two possible substitutions for noun phrase. So one is that the uh, start, whatever it is, look, we only need one element, we capture that in a variable, and that needs to match the definition of a noun. And the definition of a noun is here. So it is this either a man or a dog, that should be the case. If that matches there, then it should return whatever is the rest of that sentence here. So we didn't use that at end, then we pass that on here, and then say that says man uh, bites dog maybe. So then and will contain bites dog, so we pass that to rest, and then we will do the same with verb phrase and see that matches. Phrase. If there is not a match, then the answer should be no. That means it's not a sentence in this language. Okay, so here is either this definition or look the other possible definition. The other possible definition is we get in the first two elements of that sentence and that needs to match uh, uh, these two variables needs to match the one. The definition for an article it should be a fact and then noun also should be a fact and then again do this. So the following the same sequence on per phrase uh, and in this sequence you can see uh, I mean the, the fragmenting each one of the uh, sections of the sentence until uh, we continue I mean the, 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 this is the the definitions of the variables and you see that we put in here and here there are two definitions for a noun phrase and then similarly there are two definitions for verb phrase so this is the first definition for verb phrase and this is the second one right and then these are the ones that they, they have listed in this implementation that they have in this resource book the article noun and verb uh, as yes uh, some facts that are there and then uh, this will be some examples of the execution of this so in this case for example here they provide you with uh, this uh, sentence and uh, with this sentence uh, the answer in this case is yes that means yeah this sentence is okay with the grammar that can be generated there or then here uh, we got the sentence that says oh no this is not in the definition of this grammar so returns or no so now another thing that we can have is completing the um, the sentence like for example the man likes so what is what it can come then next so in this case here are the two possible other values that X can take to complete a valid sentence in the language. Uh, something similar that we have in some of uh, the uh, our fonts is the in, in devices when you are texting them, maybe you have seen that you are typing something and then maybe uh, adding the words that may be coming next. However, in this implementation that we are not using any probability so far and this is the initial implementation without any probability the uh, this is the part that is interesting how is that we decide what is the first value of x that we need to show or when you are doing implementing this like for example in the case of a mobile device you are texting and you're writing a sentence and then there are some devices that help you guessing what will be coming next um, so in, in, uh, in this implementation, it's going to go and find the first fact, fact that is listed in our knowledge. So in this case, the first one is man. So that's why it's the first one that is listed. However, it's not telling me about that is the one that is more likely. Because the one that I should be listed in the case of the, the mobile devices when you are texting, you should maybe show that because you don't have a lot of space, the one that is maybe that is more likely, right? And that's what we're going to see later. But here there are some other uh, uh, text te testing, sorry, testing of the uh, executions of this implementation. So now we are ready to go into the probabilistic. And I will do that in uh, another video because now this is just too long.